So, you want to learn French, but you're not that good at learning new languages. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Baguette. Yep, that, you're you're fluent now. <laughs> Congratulations, dude. Hey guys, I'm Matt, that's my Kai, I'm Kai, and today we're back once again taking a look at how to create this cool looking hologram kind of effect that you see on the screen here. Now, I'm going to start this off by saying that this is obviously going to be very easy with simple shapes like a cube or a sphere or a cylinder, and it's going to be much more complex the more complex the object is. So um, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just move all this out the way. So essentially, this is going to be broken down into three different parts. And I'll explain in a moment here. But let's go ahead. Um, and we'll just uh, we'll start this up anew. So I have my scene set to solid black here. You see the background is just solid black in the in the in the world properties tab. I have this set on um, rendered viewport shading up at the top right as well, as you can see. So let's go ahead and let's add in an object. I'll do a, a more difficult object just to spite myself. Um, let's go ahead and use uh, monkey. Let's go ahead and use Suzanne the monkey. Um, now, so you can see over here, if I look at the cube that I just made, you can see there's three things going on here. If you take a look very, very closely, you can see there's a thicker outside line. You see the the lines on the inside are a bit thinner and you see the um, there's kind of like a darker tint, you know, like like a kind of a, a, a darker area in, in the middle. So it's like a little darker. So the back lines are a bit darker of a color than these four front lines, which is very good for, you know, making you be able to tell what's going on and, and where everything is at. So it looks really, really cool, especially when you go to isometric view. It looks really, really cool. So. I'm going to go ahead and break this down. Let's go back to the um, the center over here and let's look at Suzanne. Now, Suzanne is a complex shape, so it'll be a lot more difficult of a task to do, but we'll start off doing this one and then I'll show you guys the simple one. Actually, we'll do the uh, opposite way around. I'll show you the simple one first and then we'll do the more difficult one. So let's go ahead and actually add in a cube. I'll add in a cube real quick. Um, let's go to solid paper shading so we can see what we're doing. Now, let's go to the modifiers tab and hit add modifier and then immediately we'll ju we're just going to change this to wireframe boom as you can see we have a nice wireframe there i'm going to turn the thickness up so it's a bit thicker um just like that now what we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and hit shift d and i'm going to go ahead and um, duplicate this and then right click this cube to get rid of the movement so i don't no, i don't like lock that movement in so we'll just put it right back where it goes hit tab to go into edit mode and you can see it brings up this like edit mode kind of I mean, everything's kind of like yellowish orangey um so now what we need to do is we need to add some 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 segments in here so that we can have these lines in the middle so let's right click anywhere on your in anywhere in, in, the, in the screen just right click hit subdivide you can see it's going to add uh one line going straight down and up and then it's going to add another line going left to right so if you hit this subdivide again you can see it does it again and then if you do it again it does it again so let's go ahead and actually i'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger we'll uh, only subdivide it twice um so we have the, all these lines all these lines are going to indicate where a line is going to be at so let's go ahead and hit tab to go back into edit mode and you can see now we have um to back back out of edit mode rather and you can see now we have all these lines now these lines are too thick so we're going to go ahead and change the thickness down um and scale them on down something about right there but as you can see because we have two different objects now we have the thicker lines on the outside and we have the thinner lines on the inside we have a nice cameo from a guy that owns a harley davidson outside so let's go ahead and um add these materials now so let's go to the uh the material tab let's select the thicker one first um hit new and we'll change this to the appropriate name bob let's go ahead and change the surface uh from principal bsdf to emission actually we can leave it as emission actually uh leave it as principal bsdf and the reason is because i want to actually use the emission shader section that's inside of the principal bsdf shader and the reason is because i'll show you it's a super super simple super simple reason um so if i were to go ahead and turn the emission color up to white you can see that if I drop the if I drop the alpha down, oh not the alpha, if I turn the eh, strength up, something like that. Let's let's change the color to a nice blue color like that. Um, if I change the if I change the what is it alpha? No, it's not alpha. Oh, let's go ahead and well, if we if we have the base color, you can leave the base color at the same exact color. You do not need to make it a different color at all. It'll work just off of the emission color that we have here which is super super cool so am i what am i forgetting here actually i just did this literally four seconds ago what am i what am i oh that's why because it's too bright what am i thinking all right i can't see what's going on here i'm completely blind i don't know what's happening all right 
So if we go back to the cube that we have here, you can see we drop down the emission, the emission color. There we go. And we turn the alpha up a little bit, turn the alpha up a little bit. If let's go to maybe like, I don't know, uh, point 23, that's fine. Um, let's go ahead and add in a lamp because we don't have that because I moved it over there. You can see now, if we take a look at this, you can see that we have edges still. We still have edges on the sides, which is exactly what I want. Because if we were to use the emission shader, you can see this little edge. See the little edge on top there? It's a little brighter there. Let me turn the point lamp up, actually, so you can see a little bit better. There we go. Oh, you can see a lot now. Um, so you can see we have some nice, some nice like, you know, tones here. It's not, it's not just like a flat, solid blue color. Um, so this is Principal BSDF with the emission shader on. Um, with the emission portion down here on and I also have bloom on in the main tab here So make sure you check bloom on if you want that nice little glow in the main tab right here under render properties bloom Back to the material tab you can see like I said it, but if you if you use the emission shader, it's just a solid color Ew, gross There's no edges there gross, but if we go back to the principal BSDF shader you can see let's go Control Z that look at that Boom, we got some nice edges there, and it's still glowing. So it looks gorgeous, looks very nice. I'm gonna actually choose a different color for this. We'll do like a, um, like a red, like a red, reddish thing like this, um, because I did a blue one earlier. So let's go ahead and grab the, uh, secondary pieces of the cube here. So this little, this little piece right here. Let's go to the, um, Drop, it's a little drop down and select Bob because you know that's that's our dude, Bob. Now you can see there's one thing missing, which is the, um, the kind of thing to make it look a little darker in the background. And this is where most people would probably stop. They go, oh, we're done. Uh, it, it, the hologram's done. It looks good because it, it does look cool. It looks super cool. There's nothing wrong with this at all. Make sure you turn specular all the way down and roughness all the way up, by the way, or all the way down either way. It works the same way. Um, also, just might as well just max everything to zero. Um, there we go. So this is where most people would stop, which is fine. You can stop here. It's no big deal. It's, it looks perfectly fine the way that it is. You know, you can choose different colors. We might do yellow. That's pretty sweet, actually. Well, um, you, you can stop here, but I'm going to take a step further. Let's go ahead and grab the outlines. So the, the bigger, the bigger wireframes hit G to move, by the way. Um, uh, let's go ahead and hit shift D once, once again. So shift D to duplicate that, then right click to cancel the movement. Um, go to the modifiers tab and, and delete the wireframe modifier. Now you can see when we do that, it'll instantly create this weird, like solid cube again. So it'll be solid once more. Now we don't want this. We want it to be a black color. So let's go this black color. So let's go to the material tab, hit this little plus button, and then we can change this color. Actually, we'll like, we get rid of that. And then, um, oop. Uh, you can add that and hit new and then we'll change his name to um um dark bob he's the evil version of bob it's like uh dark sonic you know that guy crazy all right now so let's go ahead and change the uh the settings here down in the bottom you can go down to uh the blend mode and turn shadow mode to none and turn the blend mode to alpha blend now nothing's changed it, it's not that big of a deal but when we go to alpha and we drop this down oops, and we drop this down and let's change the base color to like a black color um and then we can get rid of bob get rid of that get rid of that guy we don't need him anymore um now we only have dark bob here so the dark bob is what we want there we go um let's go ahead and turn the um the alpha all the way up and you can see what it does here you can see when we turn it up and down it kind of you know, it becomes more and more, less or more transparent depending on how much you have it. I'm going to leave it on about point, da, 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 point 0.92, something like that. Um, and we're going to also go ahead and make sure that we have the specular all the way off and the roughness all the way off and make sure just everything is just turned down, honestly. So there we go. That's how you do it. Now we have a darker uh, background than the foreground. So you can see, take a look closely. You can see these these lines back here in the background are darker than these ones up in the foreground, which just looks really cool. And it gives some separation between that because that is like what's going on i can't see i'm blind and then if we turn it up to about there it's like whoa this has some depth to it it looks pretty cool huh kai that looks pretty sweet man i like that this is a good tutorial i enjoyed it i will subscribe now that's exactly what you're thinking i know don't you have to tell me it's fine um so let's go ahead and real quick before we end this tutorial off i want to show you example of how you would do a more complex shape which is going to be a pain in the keister um but listen if you have a complex shape like suzanne let's go ahead and um, this is going to be pain Oh, holy moly. Uh, if you have a complex shape like uh, Suzanne, 
And the thing you want to want to do is you have to decide where you want the thicker lines to be, if you even want thicker lines, honestly. So let's go ahead and um, and duplicate her up real quick. So we'll hit uh, Tab Duplicator. Uh, sorry, hit Shift D to duplicate, then hit Tab to go into Edit Mode. Now I think I'm going to want to go ahead and have this line around the edge here be her um, be a thicker line. So if you hold down Shift and Alt and click like on an angle like this, so it goes like lengthwise. There you go. It'll work. If you, if you like this and try and do it, it'll go Oh, Sometimes it'll work that way too. It'll go like that. But if you kind of look the way you want it to go, like, like pretend, you're looking, pretend you're looking down a road, you know, and then hold shift and hold alt and then click. It'll select the whole loop essentially is what we're, what we just, what we just done. So I'll uh, make that one like a thick one. We'll make uh, maybe this a thick. Nope. We'll make, maybe, maybe this, make this a thick one. Nope. Nope. That's not what I want. Maybe make this around here like this and we'll go all the way down select all that up and then yeah, yeah 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 okay so there there and then all of this so this is why i said it would be it's annoying because you have to select which areas you want to be um the thicker lines which is like oh uh, you gotta do it by hand but listen it's it's worth it because this is a very cool effect that i like quite a bit make sure you're still holding down shift you don't want to accidentally unselect something you've painstakingly taken the time to select so let's go ahead and oh not you can't do ones that are touching you don't want to get a, a an orange box like that because then the whole thing will just be like thicker there so it's a little strange got to be a little careful about what you choose we'll go straight down the middle here and then probably straight up the top and that might be it like thusly that works perfect right there in that area and then we'll do maybe do her eyes like around this area right here yeah 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 all right and then we'll do like something like that all the way up there we go that looks pretty perfect to me all right so let's go ahead and um what is it alt i no control i control i um hit uh delete and then we'll do delete vertices and you can see everything that's left is uh like all of the outlines we just selected go to the modifier tab hit add modifier wireframe oh actually we'll undo that because it's not going to work exactly that way so let's go ahead and actually uh oop, let's go ahead and turn this to doo -doo -doo, oop, not face select mode We've, we've unselected everything. All right, cool. So now we have we have all this. What we need to do is we actually need to go ahead and um, and select do everything except so, so we need to select everything other than this. So we'll do it. We'll go ahead and do control I. So what we're going to do now that you have your nice little wireframe of the vertices you decided to make thicker than the rest for no apparent reason whatsoever. We're going to we're going to going to go ahead and add the modifier of the wireframe. But you can see it doesn't do anything because we don't have any faces. So let's go ahead and hit tab to open this up and then hit E to extrude everything. But then hit right click to cancel the movement. So it's just like literally created faces, but they're sitting right on top of each other. So let's hit tab to go back out of edit mode. And you can see instantly it's now created those cool looking um those cool looking uh like lines that we need so we can turn the thickness up a little bit they are flat but because we're using um emission you most definitely will not tell um so it's just a nice little thing to have it be a little bit thicker than the other lines and now we can go to actual real suzanne hit add modifier mo uh wireframe and then turn down the um, wireframe to a very small amount as you can see we have those lines that look a lot thicker like i said it's very very much more difficult with a complex shape like this but you probably wouldn't be using too complex of a shape with this kind of thing in the first place i'm not assuming you're you know making a polygram of spider-man so with this like a, a a regular one a regular non-moving hologram like this is like for it's like for nice pictures you know what i mean night for nice little 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 picture pictures you know what i mean it's, or what are the little turn the little turn tables that people do the little turn styles for cool uh materials or for cool models or something like that but let's go ahead and put the same uh, materials on both of these so we'll put uh material on there and then we'll go ahead and put the other material on there as well so we, when, we, when we go to render view shading, you can see it looks like this which looks really cool so um once we're done with that actually we need to go ahead and do the uh, darker part so let's go ahead and grab the thin the thin lines hit shift d to duplicate them right click to cancel movement and then we'll go to the modifiers tab uh get rid of the wireframe key uh the wireframe modifier back to the material tab hit this little drop down and select that black uh, color that we made earlier and you can see that we still have that nice uh, alpha on there from earlier as well so that is uh that's literally how you do that it looks really really cool it's very easy to do it's just kind of annoying with more complex shapes but you can see 
Um, these things look really, really cool. You get the one back there, you get the one up here, and you get the one down here as well. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, hope you learned something new. I think this is a really simple and cool thing. Like I said, it does work best for simplistic uh, shapes and objects, so cubes, cylinders, you know, spheres, stuff like that. But it does work for advanced um, models, even though I don't really uh, advise using uh, super advanced uh, models for this kind of thing. But I hope you learned something new. I hope you like the darker, like, inside portion, which I think adds a lot to this kind of, uh, this kind of object. I will see you in the next one, but until then, bye-bye.